The G navigation system was designed by Robert Dippy and was one of the most widely used systems of its type used during World War II. When Bomber Command realised that very few of the bombs it dropped were reaching the right target, it was clear that navigators needed a reliable system to be put in place with a sense of urgency. Whilst the idea behind G's system was relatively simple, any attempt to describe its operation with all the finer details included would doubtless lead to confusion. Hence, with both the following system description and later on the video clips of G equipment settings, we'll gloss over the basics. G worked on the principle of transmitting pulsed signals from a master station called the A station. This signal is then sequentially transmitted from two slave stations, namely B and C, by measuring the time it took the signal to reach the receiver. From each of these three sources, it was possible to plot the receiver position on a specially made navigation chart which incorporated hyperbolic lines. Here we see a small area taken from a G chart of Middlesbrough, dated February 1943. It's easy to see the hyperbolic curves on this portion, along with the different colours associating each set with a specific transmitting station the red curves being from the B slave and the green curves from the C slave. Whilst the American Loran navigation aid was actually using timings on its charts, G simplified this by using what were called G units, a G unit being 66.67 microseconds long. Also unlike Loran, which also required the operator to take two sets of readings for each navigation fix, G took the two readings simultaneously from the slave stations, thereby making the system quicker and easier to use. This diagram shows how the G receiver picks up three sets of signals from the transmitters. Due to some ambiguities where lattice lines cross at more than one point which would result in poor location accuracy, it's necessary sometimes to include a third slave station called D which also appears on the same screen. This is the typical look of a G screen showing simulated pulses from the A master station along with those from slaves B and C. Note that once the screen has been synchronised to the pulse chain by using the large rotary control to the bottom right, these will appear stationary, with the A pulse showing first to the far left of each line. Several points to make here. The A master and B slave are always on the top line, with the same A master pulse along with the C slave on the lower one. To ensure that the pulses are synchronised to be on their correct lines, Every other time the Master A transmitted its pulses before the C slave, it added another pulse, giving what was known as the second ghost pulse. This appeared on the C slave lower line immediately after the A pulse to the far left. To try and make a little more sense of this, the following diagrams have been created. The first one showing the order of the pulse transmissions. Note the extra A ghost pulse which will ultimately appear on the bottom line before the C slave pulse. Split the line in half, separate the two parts and place the B slave line on top of the C slave line. This is the basic format for the display on the G indicator screen with the exception of the actual B and C slave pulses which in reality will be displayed as downward spikes on the indicator screen for operator clarity. Hopefully this will help make more sense of the live display we see here with some simulated signals. You'll probably now spot the extra A master pulse which appears as the ghost pulse to the left of the bottom C slave line. In addition to these pulses you'll notice that there's a little square bucket below each of the two lines. These are generated within the indicator unit itself and adjusted by two pairs of fine and coarse controls below the screen. These will be needed to line up the B and C slave pulses so that the operator can make the navigation measurements. If we now switch straight to the strobe time base, we can adjust the signals up more accurately with the leading edges of the pulses aligned. This is the screen setting from which the measurements are taken. At this stage the receiver is turned off and the only pulses you see on the two lines are generated from within the indicator unit itself using the information taken from the adjustments we just made. There will however be occasions when it's necessary to use a second setting to show 30 calibration pips per line as opposed to the 25 we see here.
by measuring the position of the two downward facing strobe markers with respect to the calibration pips, the two correct coordinates can be plotted on the G-chart for a position fix. And that's the conclusion of our brief summary of obtaining a G-navigation fix. Remember though that the transmitted pulses you see here are simulated and we've deliberately skipped a couple of important settings on the indicator in order to clarify the demonstration. Thank you for watching.